Hello and welcome to another Friday Artwork video. So we're up to red cards now in terms of the cards I'm working through where they are old bordered cards that I've pulled from Dollarama repacks. As you've seen in the previous episodes what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the cards zoomed out and then I'll reset up the camera there'll be a break in the middle and I will zoom in so we can see the artwork up real close the reason why I do that is because a lot of these are older cards with mechanics that possibly have not been seen again or for a long time and that way if you're not familiar with the card just by its name or its artwork then that gives you a chance to familiarise yourself on the first pass so we've got quite a few here again and I'm going to go through these roughly in, like roughly chronologically, although there will be a little bit of wiggle room here and there. I don't know if you remember Dwarven Soldier from uh, an episode of um, Commander Fodder. This is the uh, the other artwork, and I actually pulled a couple of different artworks for these some orcs and dwarves so it's got a dark symbol on it but it's a white border so that means it's probably from Chronicles more than, night, more than likely from a core set. Oh dear, the grey ogre. And then we're on to Ice Age. Again with you know, a lot of these art early cards, slightly uh, amusing artwork which may or may not become more amusing when we zoom in. Did I mess up there? I think I might have done. Oh no, that is right. It's in the right order. And moving on here to Mirage. It's funny as well with some of these cards, like obviously some are dinged up because they've been played clearly or not very well looked after. But I suppose if they're just sort of uh, draft fodder or whatever, it's probably going to be the case that they're, they might get warm. But a lot of these look, dare I say, pack fresh. Even though potentially they've been in and out of people's collections, maybe. So we're now to Tempest period. A lot of these have, you know, very busy rules text. Also getting into a period in Magic where it's a lot easier to spot the rarities because of the uh, appropriate colours of the uh, set symbols. This is around Urza's block. Oh, lava 
Max. And then we move on to 6th edition. And here we're around the period of Macadian masks. Moore's better at identifying sunset symbols better than others. These were interesting, these um, enchantments which you could return to your hand. Obviously, as you probably notice with a lot of the artwork, it seemingly improves <laughs> as we move through Magic's history. And, um, you know, you get to that period, I suppose, where there was a lot more consistency within the set in terms of the artwork generally. We've seen quite a few goblins here. I suppose we're in red, so there's no surprise. Another interesting thing when you're going through these as well um, with certain sets is interesting to see how things like removal gets costed and where that removal is in terms of the rarity as well. Lots of beasts, lots of goblins. All carbonized, yes. And then we're seeing a few of these crop up as well. So these were the what was it time spiral block, time shifted cards that were in the first set they're inserted so they're like older cards but um, they've got the you know the old border on it as well so it's uh, a modern card frame set but the time shifted cards have the older borders on and that's why I include them in here even though they're from a you know a modern era set. Okay so I'll uh, reset the camera and uh, we'll get zoomed in and we'll go through the artwork real close up. Okay so let's take a close up look of the same cards but zoomed in on the artwork.
got some classics here as well. Hill Giant, which is the 3 3 for 4. And then the Grey Ogre, which was a 2-2 two, two for 3. It's actually a surprisingly slippery. I think I've mentioned um, with these I have to keep it zoomed out ever so slightly more than uh, when I'm doing the commander decks. Um, as I noticed with um, certainly the early, earlier cards it has a real problem focusing when it's up close. I always find that the, the writing down in this area where the card type is just inherently seems to look blurry and uh, that doesn't always seem to help with the camera focus. Obviously my plan is, you know, next week's one we'll get on to green. And we've already done land and artifacts the first week I did this, so after that I'll do the multicoloured stuff. And then once we've done that I'll then move back to specific sets which have been pulled actually from original boosters or some which have been purchased as singles and they'll be going back to yeah, probably Ice Age era, maybe even earlier possibly. and now I can look at things like cycles and other specific cards from the sets, so a bit more focused rather than necessarily relying on just random stuff. Also got some interesting uh, legendary creatures as well, which will have a really good laugh with the artwork.
think we were talking quite a bit about scalable X spells in the uh, deck musings episode from yeah this week I always get confused because I shoot like a week ahead so I just literally um, shot a video where that sort of comes up in a slightly different context more in the context of, of you know blue cards but spreads to uh, X spells generally yeah I, I find it fascinating actually how scalable X spells um, you know, what's the word really, like manifest themselves or how they are executed um, in the different colours and what sort of things to expect in, in terms of, you know, what is the X part of the casting cost scaling um, or sometimes where it's not specifically in the casting cost um, is there like a secondary resource that it is calling upon? I was trying to think the other day what, what are some of the biggest core sets and I think wasn't it fifth edition was one of the sets which had the most amount of cards in it in fact that there's so many cards in there um, and as a result obviously so many commons you can actually build some interesting sort of two color pauper decks just within fifth edition um, to play against and one of the books i have actually does that it goes through fifth edition and suggests for all of the uh, two color combinations some pauper decks I'm trying to remember, I think they also have sideboards as well. There we have it. Another stack of uh, old board cards that we've worked through. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now and I will catch you in the next episode.